Hey everyone, my name is Evan Reddick. I'm the Public Safety Chair for the Philadelphia Youth Commission and welcome to the Conscious Party. Okay. It's because of us. Black women are not natural because they study black men. And they have found out that although we might not want a white woman, we want a woman who looks white to some extent, particularly in the hair. So we want the body of a black woman, but we want the phenotype of a white woman. Sisters have studied us. So she's only trying to look like that when she feels we look too. So if black men got real serious about our expectations, a lot of our sisters would be more natural than what they are. So brothers, we have to start leading. You got to get to the point where you say, I don't date sisters who ain't natural. If every brother in Philly did that, the weave shops will shut in a month. If sisters knew they couldn't find a brother unless they was natural, the weave shops would shut. So we have just as much influence over her hair as she does. And speaking as a psychologist, working with little girls in the schools, ladies, I can tell you that the biggest problem I find is black little girls hating their hair. It's the Dr. Umar, I'm ugly. Why you say that? My hair. Yes. Because they're looking at y'all and they say, well, this must be ugly because all them try to look like the white lady. Part of being unapologetically African is being unapologetically who you are. And we can't claim to say we equal the whites when we keep trying to imitate them. Because people who feel equal don't see the need to imitate no one else. If you're imitating, there's an inferiority complex. Whether you're looking like her, whether you're marrying her women, whether you're marrying her men, people who love who they are don't go running around looking for other people. Black men marry out the race more than the men of every other race in America put together. How can we blame that on chance? Now, another thing, young people. Y'all going to come across a lot of people in your life who are going to be able to talk that conscious talk. And you got to be able to evaluate because we got conscious hustlers. Don't get it wrong. Oh, Lord. Trust me. I work with these niggas. They got a strong conscious rap. So how do you evaluate black consciousness? Five criteria. Evaluate everybody on these five, including me. The first is consciousness. How intelligent are they about the black reality? Do you know yourself? Consciousness. And I think you should also evaluate a potential mate on the same thing. Consciousness. The second one, courage. Do they have the courage to speak truth to white power? How many of us can say that we would speak as unapologetically in front of white folks as we do with each other? In fact, I can tell you when a white person comes to my lecture, and they're always there, a couple, because they're agents, right? But not only that, they're always there because black people don't own no real estate. So when I do a lecture, it's normally at a what? Publicly owned venue that the blacks rent it out. So when the white folks find out Dr. Umar speaking at a publicly owned venue, because it might be a black organization, but they're not for profit, which means they cannot discriminate on the basis of race, which means they cannot tell us we cannot come. Did y'all hear what I just said? That's one of our biggest problems. Black people cannot meet by themselves because we don't own no real estate. Mm -hmm. Only reason why we're in here by ourselves because they own it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, white folks would be sitting in here too. Mm -hmm. They do the research and they look and see who can't turn them away. I was at a library one time in Indianapolis, Frederick Douglass Library or something like that. White folks came and the brothers came over to me. God, <coughs> should we tell them to get out? I said, you can't. Well, why not? I said, because y'all 501c3 getting grants. Mm -hmm. And if you send those white folks home, they're going to call up the IRS, they're going to call up the government, they're going to call up the mayor, they're going to call up everybody and say that I got kicked out because of my race. You know what they're going to do to y'all? They're going to sue y'all, and every grant dollar you ever got, you're going to have to pay back. Mm -hmm. Lead the white folks in here. Yes, if you don't own the building, you don't control who comes in. That's what they do. So we can never have a face-to-face -face honest conversation because there's always devils amongst us most of the time. Chinese people meet alone all the time. Mm -hmm. You don't see nobody. You got the Chinese Business Association right here on 52nd Street, I think. Right out there, they right around this corner. Off of Chestnut, there's a Chinese business thing. Ain't nobody near but Chinese. The Jews, ain't nobody near but Jews. But wherever black folks at, it's always multicultural. You can't keep nobody out because you don't own nothing. And every last one of y'all got to become a property owner. Not just have a home. Nah, that's too small. Mm -hmm. Come buy your first home. Damn that. Buy your first business structure. Like where you at right now? A place where you can do business. Mm -hmm. You can live on top. 
Get a storefront. Business on the bottom, you live on top. We got to build businesses, y'all. Whatever it is y'all going to do with your life, please make a business out of it. You say, you're going to school for medicine. Open up your own hospital. You're going to school to be a teacher. It's okay to spend a few years at school district in Philadelphia, but then you need to open your own school. You say you want to be a lawyer. I truly hope you enjoyed this episode of The Conscious Party Show. Thank you.